Hi everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching video. As usual, this video is created from a full length tutorial that I have made specially for my Patreon supporters. So, if you want to watch the full instructional tutorial video, you can support me on Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the creator that you like. And so far over the past year or so, I have created close to 40 tutorials on Patreon. So if you support me at a $5 or $10 tier, you can have access to all those tutorials. So today I am sketching this from the comfort of my home. Yes, I wanted to sketch this, uh, the Thai Grand Palace on location while I was on holiday in Bangkok a few weeks ago but it was really hot that day and to stand under the sun and draw the Grand Palace it's, uh, it's probably suicidal I think it's going to get me dehydrated so I took a reference photo and decided to draw from the reference photo at home which is uh, what you are looking at right now so for this particular sketch, I am drawing from the left to the right. I draw from the foreground to the background. So I start by drawing all these people first. And as you can see, I do not use a lot of details when drawing people like this because uh, first of all, the fountain pen that I'm using, the nib is a bit thick for the size of the sketch that I'm drawing. So it's very difficult to draw details when you are drawing with a large tip or for example if you are drawing with a blunt pencil you cannot get a lot of details. So when drawing all these people I just try and draw the general shape of the people. I do not draw details like the eyes, fingernails um, and things like that, the smaller details. I just draw the lines that uh, contribute to the shape of the people. Adding people to scenes really make a sketch look more lively. When there are people, there are activities, you know that there is a lot of life going on. Now sketching people from reference photo, it's much easier compared to sketching people from location because uh, people are always moving around, walking here and there. It's difficult to draw them when they are moving around. So if you want to practice drawing people, you can draw them from reference photo. When you become so familiar with drawing people, you probably will be able to remember the general shape of how a person is supposed to look like. And this is very helpful when you are drawing people on location because people move around. And when they move around, because you have that memory of how a person is supposed to look like, you can fill in the blanks very easily. So learning to draw people is very helpful. I'm now working on the middle ground, which is the building. So I have turned my fountain pen nib upside down. I'm now drawing from the other side of the fountain pen nib to get the thinner lines because for middle ground, middle ground it's further away from the foreground so elements are supposed to be smaller lines in this case are supposed to be thinner compared to the foreground that's why I turned my fountain pen nib upside down just to draw with the thinner lines and now that I have finished sketching I'm going to use watercolor to apply over the pen and ink sketch the colors that I'm using today are new gumbosh Crinacridon Red and French Ultramarine. So that's just the color wheel that I have painted out to sort of get an idea about the colors that I can get with those three colors. And in this section, I have wet the paper first so that I can get some wet on wet techniques. I wanted to use French Ultramarine to paint the sky. I want the colors to flow down and right now I'm using the tissue to basically pick up 
excess water and also to pick up some of the paint because I want to show off some of the clouds, some of the white clouds. Sometimes I begin painting with brighter colors like yellow, orange or red. Sometimes I begin by painting gray washes. In this case, I started with the gray washes and also the browns. These are mixed with ultramarine, new gamboge and uh, queen of Crydon red. So you can see the beautiful granulation from ultramarine on some of the washes. And whenever I want to uh, switch to a certain color, I will just dab my brush very quickly into the paint, into a new color to pick up the color and continue painting on. So that's how I am able to get those uh, gradations. I'm not sure if you can see how crowded that place is, but as I look at this sketch, it brings back memories of me visiting the place and also just how many people, how many tourists there are on that particular day, on that hot and humid afternoon. And I'm painting the trees here with sap green. And now I'm painting the roofs of the Grand Palace with new gumbosh and a mix of Queen of Crydon red. For the shadow areas, they are mostly French ultramarine mixed with Queen of Crydon red. When I want the shades to be darker, I use more ultramarine. For the last stage, I'm adding some shadow details and also making some of the areas a bit darker to get that extra contrast. This is a particularly cloudy day, so there are no harsh shadows. But for my sketch, I wanted to make some of the shapes a bit darker to get a contrast so that it will read better for the person who is looking at the sketch. This sketch is almost complete. I kind of like this limited palette that I'm using. Now this palette is not able to create bright greens, that's why I have to use a sap green. And remember to support me, you can just support me on my Patreon or Gumroad pages and have access to additional drawing tutorial videos where you can learn how to draw and paint. Just check out the links in the video description below to my Patreon and Gumroad pages. So that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks and see you in the next video. Bye.